anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction that can result in death. As a matter of fact, about 1,500 people annually die in the United States from anaphylaxis. And even though this can be characterized as a shock state, it's usually not a compromised hemodynamic status that uh, does people in. It is the failure of the respiratory system. Drug of choice for that is epinephrine. And if one has a sensitivity to known substances, and there are many that can cause anaphylaxis in, in the environment, dust, pollen, uh, insect stings and bites, foods, drugs, which is the number one cause of anaphylaxis, exercise, and unknown triggers, then they usually have their own EpiPen, and the EpiPen can be life-saving for these folks. The uh, dose for epinephrine from the Epi injector is 0.3 milligrams for the adult, half of that for the pediatric dosage. And uh, if one dose does it, then these folks are in good shape. However, if they are away from uh, the aegis of EMS or the emergency department and they require a second dose, the auto injector is not a handy tool to have because it is a single-use appliance. Dr. Thomas Kessler, a member of the Wilderness Medical Society and on the steering committee of the Appalachian Center for Wilderness Medicine, has examined the methods for retrieving additional epinephrine from a used EpiPen. And while we do not endorse this practice for the layperson, it could be life-saving for someone who is away from EMS, away from the emergency department, and has a rebound. This occurs to about 25 to 35 percent of folks who have an anaphylactic response. So if you happen to be in that category and you're away from uh, uh, populated areas, then this could be life-saving for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and get something out of it. Those of us interested in wilderness medicine are quite interested in the EpiPen because anaphylaxis is such a concern in the backcountry. There are actually now two styles of EpiPens. The original EpiPen came in a round container. The new EpiPen comes in an oval container, and they're really not quite the same. They both work with a similar mechanism, and to start out, we'll go ahead and discharge the pen like we're going to use it on an anaphylaxis patient. We remove the safety clip from the old style pin, and then we jab the thigh. Let's see here. And you can see how quickly the epinephrine is injected. Oh, I missed my finger. The new style pin works essentially the same way by removing the safety and Within two or three seconds, the epinephrine is injected. You'll also notice that in the old style EpiPen, the needle remains exposed. In the new style pen, the needle is enclosed, making it easier to do. To actually access the epinephrine left in the syringe, we have to open it. And we'll demonstrate that now. With the old style pen, you see the needle is still exposed. So you have to be careful to not point at anything. There's a very strong spring in here. If you take away some of the outside peeling so you can visualize the mechanism inside, you'll see that there's a white plastic cap at the end. And this white plastic cap 
right here is the case for the spring. When we remove the plastic from the cap, it's going to shoot with a great deal of force. So we have something downstream to catch it. We're just now going to cut through this, be careful with the needle. We're just going to cut through this plastic. And it's easier to do with a thinner knife blade, but this is what I happen to have. And it's about to shoot. And you want to be sure no one's standing in the way when that happens. At this point in the old pen, you take the cartridge out of the case and it will simply unscrew. You can see that this red stopper has a flange that stops it from going any further. If you turn this around, you can now use it to inject the rest of the epinephrine that's in the syringe. We compared an un unused carpule to one that had been expired. And it's about three quarters of the length of the black stopper. So if you use this, you could push this down about three quarters of the length for a second dose. Using injecting the needle into the individual, pushing this down until you've done almost the complete width of the stopper. There are actually about three or four additional doses of epinephrine in the old style pin. Now we'll go to the new style pin. You can see the new style pin that the needle is protected so it's not an issue. I've also removed the instructions on the outside of the plastic cartridge. You can see the white inside. We need to cut between three little flanges here and the end of the plastic here. Again, expect some pressure from the spring as we do this. So we'll start cutting here. So we want to be sure it's not pointing to one when that happens. And now we can remove the white plastic inside. And you'll notice that the epinephrine syringe is still held in the white plastic here. So we'll have to remove this by squeezing on the clips and it will slide out. Squeezing right here on the sides of the syringe unless this pop right out. Unfortunately, in this new syringe, this is no longer the threaded attachment. It's a friction attachment, so we have to carefully back the stopper out until the black part is at the edge of the glass, and then lever out to remove this part of the syringe. This piece can now be used to inject same as the other piece, or if you want to be more precise, you can take a small stick like a toothpick. It will fit very nicely into the slotted end and then can be used to engage the stopper. And again, we want to have the needle into the individual and advance this about three quarters of the width of the stopper. Again, there's about another three or four doses of epinephrine in the vial once it's removed from the syringe, as we just demonstrated. We were experimenting with these different syringes, and we took this one out 
before we engaged it like we would have given it a shot. So this has been an unused epinephrine carpule. This is the one we just demonstrated. If we line them up, you can see how far the plungers moved for one dose of epinephrine. You want to move the plunger the same distance for each additional dose of epinephrine if it's needed.